Do I have anything in my teeth? No. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to our update video. This is going to be for the second half of January and February. And so you're going to see this right at the beginning of March when you're watching this right now. But that's kind of the month and a half time frame that we're going to be talking about. Got a lot to update you on That's that's been going on here. And I'm going to let Brooke start it off. Yeah, so one of the coolest parts of this past month was that um, instead of a normal month of school that we typically have, we had the Randy Clark Healing School come. And so for about five days, we were able to take part as BSSM students in the Randy Clark Healing School. And then they also did a healing conference that they do every year for Bethel that we got to be a part of. Um, so it was a really long week. Um, we stayed there some late nights till like past 10 p.m., but it was super incredible. And it basically we learned a ton about healing and impartation. They even had an impartation line where they came and just laid hands on each and every one of us as leaders and just to be in an atmosphere where we really felt like the Lord was doing something and the Lord was really moving. I think we saw um, hundreds of healings, I could say, probably at least like 500 in the whole time we were there. Um, so that was just absolutely incredible to be in that atmosphere and to see that um, not only do we just talk about the fact that Jesus heals people and that he did heal people and that we contend for that, but we were able to just see it right in front of our eyes, Jesus just restoring people. So that was awesome. Can you say whoop whoop? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've learned a ton. Yeah, definitely. It was an amazing, amazing conference. And I don't, I don't know if you said this, but there was us BSSM students, there was the general population, some people from the church in the city came to be a part of it, but then also people from all over the world flew in to come to this conference. So, But moving forward, we have a big month in front of us that we're super excited for. We have our mission trips coming up at the end of March, and it's something that we've really been looking forward to for a long time. I mean, the obvious nature of mission trips and how fun they are and growing with the teams and all that. But I think one of the things we're, we're really excited for is the chance to, to really step out in the leadership and, and the healing that we've received and, and the pursuit of God that we've been after for so long in this environment that's been so, so well stewarded by the leaders and the people that have gone before us. This will really be one of the first chances outside of this environment, outside of the school setting to really go and, and step into the fact that not only have we been experiencing God and, and the Holy Spirit, but we get to we get to practice and, and realize that we are actually carriers of His presence, carriers of His joy and of His love and of His power and His passion to encounter His sons and His daughters. And so we get to get outside of our, our typical environment to go be the leaders that God has called us to be. And so we're really looking forward to that. Brooke will be staying here in Reading doing local outreach here in the city. And I will be going to Boise, Idaho. So thank you to all of you who supported um, both of us in our mission trips. What I'm going to be doing in Boise, Idaho is actually teaming up with three different local churches there who all have their own <laughs> who all have their own school of ministry that we're going to be partnering up with and, and doing some different classes and, and teaching into and we also get to run the services um, for a weekend there and, and just get to empower them and, and lead them in our own unique way how we feel the Lord is asking us to to do those those weekends and so we're really excited for that you know Brooke was really wanted to go on a mission trip but she really felt called to stay here with the kids number one and the number two you know there's there's going on mission trips and and they're effective and they're awesome and they're amazing and and obviously you know we're wanting to, to do missionary work and so we fully fully love it and are invested into it but I do think that there's something that's really unique about Brooke actually staying here and writing to do it is doing it on a mission trip is, I don't want to say easy, but the standard is very clear. The expectation from you and the people around you is, is very clear and it's a great thing. It, it does elevate faith and it does um, have a certain level of expectancy in there, which is a really good thing. It's not even about that. It's really about cultivating this atmosphere in our everyday life, cultivating this relationship with the Lord in our everyday, what seems to be mundane, routine life at times, but, but bringing Him 
fully alive and fully active in every, every area of our life. And so actually, I think it'll be a really cool experience for Brooke um, stepping into who she is and, and, and what God has asked her to do in her life here in Reading, realizing that she actually does carry it every single day, that we actually carry it every single day outside of going on a really unique trip. You know, mine's to Boise, Idaho. It's not like we're going to Africa or Thailand or something crazy cool that seems foreign and remote. You know, we're staying here in the U.S. recognizing that the sons and daughters are everywhere and everywhere needs Jesus. And so we're really excited for um, really the opportunity to, to step into the leadership anointing, calling, and training that we've received. But just to give you some insight into just how our family's been doing, like we have been doing so good. I think that our marriage is the best that it's ever been. I mean, we've been only married five years, but... Almost six. Yeah, almost six years. And we're just like in this like honeymoon season again. I feel like we're just so in love with each other and we're seeing like the goodness and just the joy in being married again. And I think we're just really um, seeing how God redeems and restores that and we're just thanking him every day for how good our marriage has been and I think too with our children like we're learning so much about parenting um, and that's something that you could even be praying for us too where our kids are doing incredible and we're yeah. learning a ton about parenting but we also have yeah. two toddlers every day is new for us when they get another year older it's a new thing that we've never experienced it's like we're winging it so um, if you could pray for us um, as we are trying to raise our children, and especially for our son Zion, he's napping right now, but he um, is an incredibly strong and wise and tender-hearted boy, um, but we are just like reaching some new um, depths or just some new areas <laughs> in parenting that we've never been before. And so we're yep. really trusting God of like how to teach us how to love him and to yep. discipline him in a way that will empower him to be who he's supposed to be. So if you just want to pray for us as we parent these two like wonderful kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and just to shed light on it a little bit more, you know, especially with the marriage, you know, we talked about in the last video and it has been amazing, you know, especially after the marriage conference that we um, were blessed to be able to go to. We, we left it and it was amazing and it was great and, and that lasted for a few months, but then we did actually hit a little bit of a rough patch. You know, coming out of the healing of that conference and coming out of just the awesome work that God did, you know, you still then have to learn how to then steward the healing that you've received. I think a lot of times people do get healed of something and then six months, two months, two weeks, a year, whatever the case is, it's always, you know, dependent on every different scenario. You can start to fall back into the same patterns that got you broke the first time, you know, and we find this very common in, in mental perspectives and, and outlooks on life and, and things like that. Sometimes even physically it can do that. Our tough season wasn't nearly what it has been in the past. We were able to still connect. We, we do almost nightly walks and conversations with each other that we have really held as a very high importance to us. And so we just learned so many tools that even through a little bit of a rough season, a little bit of a rough patch, you know, we still learned how to, to talk to each other and to reconcile and, and to ask for forgiveness and, and say I'm sorry and, and, and work through it. And so that's been, uh, if anything, the, the rough patch that we had there a little bit was, was actually kind of a cool thing to, to realize that we can be good stewards of the healing that we've received and we can still work through things in rough patches. Doesn't mean we haven't learned anything. Doesn't mean we haven't progressed. It doesn't mean, oh, we've, we've lost everything. You know, so it's, it's been really cool and right now we're doing really, really well and so it's, it's cool to see, to experience this healing, get challenged a little bit, but then overcome the challenge better than we've over ever overcome the challenge before and, and continue to, to be thriving. So that's really cool. And and Kenley's doing awesome. Zion, like Brooke said, is, is the one, he's, he is giving us a lot of trouble right now. He, he's a great little boy. He's, this is by no means all day, every day that we're struggling with him. He's just a lot different than Kenley. And, and we're learning to parent him, not learning how to parent our kids. We're learning how to parent each of them individually. So 
But last thing, there's just a, a little thing on my heart that I want to share with you. And it actually comes out of, um, it comes from an experience that we had actually a few weeks ago. Uh, I was getting my hair cut. <laughs> Kidding me. I was getting my hair cut. And the plan was actually for me to be there and then Brooke was going to bring the kids, specifically Zion, to get his hair cut right after me. I was sitting there waiting my turn and a group of individuals walked into the barbershop. They, their cologne was of a certain herb, if you understand what I'm saying. It wasn't their cologne and you get it. And the environment that they brought with them was, was definitely contrast to the environment that we're in. We'll just word it that way. I was asking the Lord, hey, how do I how do I be you in this moment? How do I love the way that you love in this moment? And I just began to pray a little bit. Didn't make a big deal or a big scene out of it or anything. And my kids walk in with Brooke and, and Kenley and Zion, they're so sweet. And they're talking to everybody and waving and saying hi and being cute. And, and they totally just softened the whole atmosphere. We could totally see it. This group of people, their language changed a lot with the, the kids in the room, which I, I very much respect them for that and thank them for that. But the kids totally softened their hearts. You could feel it in the room. And Zion got his hair cut right after me and was held perfectly still, it was amazing. But one of the individuals in specific really began to stand out to me. And as I was getting my hair cut, I couldn't stop looking at him. As Zion was getting his hair cut, I couldn't stop looking at this guy. And the Holy Spirit really began to download words of knowledge about him to me, about his past, about who he is, about the, the type of man that he really is. And, and my heart just began to hurt for him. It began to love him. It began to, to really see him the way that I believe that the Lord sees him. And, and I was realizing as I was sitting in a chair, all the stuff that the Holy Spirit was downloading to me that I knew that I needed to speak to him. And then I looked at the front door and I had this deep, deep, deep revelation in me where in, in a non-performance way, just a total conviction of the Holy Spirit, I realized that if I walked out those doors without saying anything, I might as well quit school. I might as well walk out and, and never turn my back, go, and go into business or something else and just say forget it all because how, how could I move forward? How could I walk out those doors knowing what I know, knowing what the Holy Spirit spoke to me about Him? How can I walk out those doors like nothing ever happened, like He doesn't matter any more than I mattered when I needed it the most in my life? Everything that we came here for, everything that we moved our entire family for would have become utterly meaningless in that moment if I wasn't willing to set aside my pride and my dignity and say, you matter just like I matter. And so it was a really, really divine moment for me and a big encounter for me with the Lord. And afterwards, I spoke to him for a little bit and told him some of the things that the Lord was speaking to me about him. And um, I could tell it really impacted him a lot and it meant a lot to him. And I stood up and he gave, gave me a hug, which I wasn't expecting. And one of his friends even stood up and was like, yeah, man, that's who you are. And it was kind of strange that I wasn't expecting his friends to agree with the things that I was saying because it was pretty well in contrast to the life that they were living. And it was a really cool moment. Something I was actually realizing today at church as I was thinking was this, the moment where Jesus preaches a difficult message about, you know, eat my flesh, drink my blood. And people are like, wow, that's weird. I'm out. And Jesus turns to the disciples and says, do you want to leave too? And the response is, where else am I going to go? you and you alone have the words of life. And I was just really contemplating and really sitting with the Lord on that today and realizing in, in the best way possible, I have nowhere else to go. I have, I have options, we can choose anything, but yet how could I really, tasting what I've tasted, the goodness of the Lord, His love and His joy and His peace and His comfort and His purpose and His plan and His, His divine, sovereign, love that he has for us how could i how could i go anywhere else how could we choose any other path how could we how could we go any other direction how could i have it any other way and what i love the most about the seemingly simple encounter at the barbershop was 
this moment of losing my pride and losing my dignity because death with that intact is meaningless. And the Bible talks about what good is it to gain the whole world yet forfeit your soul? What good it, would it have been to be at a ministry school pursuing the Lord, desiring that we ourselves be loved by the Lord and, and release His love and yet not do it? And become therefore hypocrites, liars. And, and I tell you this story because I want to encourage you that it's not about what you have to say in and of itself. It's not about what you're what your potential is, because if that potential doesn't turn kinetic, it, it's meaningless. It's theories that don't ever get tested. It's practice that doesn't ever get perfected. It's it's people's lives who never get impacted, and, and they're on a journey down a direction. And if it's not impacted by something, if it's not changed by something that, that causes them to see the Lord for who He is and how the Lord sees them, then, then they just continue down a road with a destiny towards hell, a destiny towards nothing. And I believe that the Lord has put in us the ability to speak with His power and His love, not my power, my love, but His power and His love, where we encounter the world, we encounter our coworkers, we encounter our family and our friends and strangers at the grocery store, and we encounter them and, and His love is a stopping force of misdirected destinies and points them to, to who He is and His glory and His love for them and to His eternal perspective and His eternal plan for their lives. And His love is, is a force to be reckoned with and it, it, it encounters us and it stops us down our, our meaningless journeys and it sets us on a righteous path towards Him that, that leads to a relationship with Him. And, I've just been having this deep revelation about these different things in this in my own life and I wanted to share that with you one to show you where we're at but then two I want to release that over you that you have that inside of you we're not doing something amazing because we sold things and moved across the country to do a ministry school we're doing something amazing be because we, we were pursuing an amazing God you're doing something amazing because you have an amazing God. It's not about how big we are or how big you are. It's about how big He is. It's about His majesty, His sovereignty, His, His love, His pursuit for us. And you have that capacity in you at your job, at your school, at your, your family reunion, at your whatever it is. You have the same thing in you. If you have Christ, you have that. So I just wanted to share that with you because it's something that's deeply and profoundly moving in my life and I think in our family's life. Yeah. I think we're just like at a place where, I mean, we've sang songs about it. We, we've learned about it for years being in church, but I just feel like we're at such a peaceful place of just being like, it's, it's all about Jesus. Like we sing about that. We say about it. We talk about it. We say that we live our lives about in that way, but it really, really is. It's just, it's all about Him. And I think we're just like at complete peace in our lives. Like we don't know the future and we don't know like what this next year is going to look like or where we're going to work or what we're going to do after this. But it's okay because it's all about Him. And we said yes. Like we said yes to Him. And he's not going to let us down. Like we've said yes and we're going to just keep saying yes because our heart is a yes to the Lord. And it's about those little moments, like the moment in the barber shop or the moment I can pray over my daughter or the conversation you can have with a family member. Like it's not about this big future ahead of us you know, in missions or standing on a stage or becoming a great pastor. That might happen for you, and that could happen for us, but it's not about that. It's just about Him and being in His presence. And we just love Jesus so much, I'd be willing to have none of that happen if it was just for one person. Even if my kids just grow up to love Jesus, that's enough for me. 
So with that guys, I hope you're encouraged. I hope you're I hope you receive that with an open heart knowing that the Lord desires an encounter with you and we're so thankful for your support. We are in need of financial support still. You know, we, we have not been fully funded throughout the course of this. And, and so that is something that we do need to catch up on and prepare for for the next coming year. So if you are supporting us, thank you so much. We, we, we love our partnership with you. If you're not, we love you so much and we would love to partner with you. So let us know. We'll put our link to our website down below if you do want to invest into us and, and what God is doing in and through us. And we'll see you guys in the next update video. Say bye-bye.